Institute of Mental Health and a major figure in the shift to community centers says, quote, on reflection, many of those patients who left the state hospitals should never have done so. We psychiatrists saw too much of the old snake pit, saw too many people who shouldn't have been there, and we overreacted. The result is not what we intended, and perhaps we didn't ask the questions that should have been asked when developing a new concept, but psychiatrists are human too, and we tried our damnedest close quote. Dr. John A. Talbot, president of the American Psychiatric Association, said, remember that is in 1984, the psychiatrists involved in the policy making at the time certainly oversold community treatment, and our credibility today is probably damaged because of it. He said the policies were based partly on wishful thinking, partly on the enormousness of the problem, and the lack of a silver bullet to resolve it then as now. I'll go on. Do you know how to solve the problem? We have a problem. The psychiatrists made a mistake. The liberal lawyers made a mistake. They released people from nut houses onto the streets. They have now metastasized into whole armies of bums who are destroying our civility and our way of life. How would you solve this problem? It's a simple question. And there are simple answers. It's not that complicated. You have to ignore the homeless advocates because they're nothing but troublemakers like the illegal alien advocates who are in it for the money. They're like George Ramos of the homeless. It's that simple. What would you do to stop it? Let's use common sense. If you put sugar on your kitchen floor, you will attract ants. Is that correct? Well, if you put sandwiches in the street for the bums, you will attract more bums. If you spend hundreds of millions of dollars on, quote, homeless services, they will come from surrounding states as they are doing into San Fran sicko. So you start by cutting off all the funding. That's number one. Cut out the sugar. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. We're talking about the homeless infestation in the cities of America, specifically San Francisco, where the homeless are now so brazen that they are defecating and urinating in the street in front of young girls, women. They don't care. The mayor is interested only in, uh, let us say, fiscal matters. Uh, San Francisco, as you well know, is the toilet bowl of America that gussies itself up as something special. It really isn't something special. It's something quite uh, other than special in many ways. I live here because I love the weather. I love the wildlife. I despise the politics of the Bay Area. It's almost unlivable. And now, of course, the um, as they say, chickens have come home to roost with the crime wave that's sweeping the city, the illegal alien hordes that have taken over the city who are walking around brazenly like Jorge Ramos uh, on, 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 on steroids. By the way, speaking of Jorge Ramos, his daughter works for the Hillary campaign. Did, did anyone say that yet on radio? Today, I doubt it. We're going to have the uh, sound between Donald Trump, who takes on Mr. Ramos, who thinks he's the savior of the illegal alien, or actually the leader leader of the illegal alien uh, community communities in America, but he got humiliated when he tried to speak out of turn at a Trump press conference. He was put in this place, but it turns out that Ramos is not really just interested in this from the point of view of, let us say, uh, ethical reasons, moral reasons, racial reasons. It's financial. His daughter works for the Hillary Clinton campaign. Jorge Ramos, the amnesty activist, Moonlights as a Univision and Fusion journalist, he revealed in June that his daughter is an employee of the Hillary Clinton campaign, and yet he calls himself a journalist. We'll talk more about that on the Savage Nation. How would you solve the mental problem, the, the problem of mental ill in the streets? It's that simple. KSFO, Fred, you live in San Francisco. What would you do? Uh, Michael, I respect you. I don't know how to tell you this, but it was 1960s and early 70s where all this began. And when those vermin grew up to be political people, such as Pelosi and Boxer, they carried their same philosophy over from 1965. And that is correct. They never grew up. They're psychotic. By definition, they're psychotics because they're still espousing a failed po the failed policies that even the psychiatric community admitted 1984 was a failure. 
that when all of these people were ta- taking over for those corporate uh, demonstrations, that Nancy Pelosi said, bless their hearts. Well, bless your heart, Pelosi, and by God, you are... Right. When, the, when the so-called, what were they called, the Occupy Movement, were, were taking over the city and causing havoc, Pelosi said she was with them in solidarity. Now, that hasn't stopped the Pelosi clan from making billions of dollars on energy projects, has it? Do you know how rich they are? And how did they get rich? They got rich politically by inside trading. Well, how did Diane Feinstein get rich? Why does that why does that octogenarian Feinstein hang on to her job? How else would she get inside information? Uh, to benefit herself and her family with many people ask this question. I'm not the only one um, I would All right, well, that still doesn't get to the issue of the homeless problem. We know who caused it We know it was caused by liberalism. How would you solve the homeless scourge? That's uh, destroying the city Mike WBAP in Dallas. What would you do to solve this problem? Yes, sir. Well, I have a question for you. My answer. I mean, do you not have a statute uh, that requires that vagrancy be met with the enforcement of the law banning? No, there is no vagrancy statute in San Francisco that's enforceable. It was eliminated by the psychosis of liberalism quite a while ago. They said that it's a uh, uh, cruel, inhumane to enforce a vagrancy statute. There is no such thing anymore. So bums are <laughs> bums are not only ejected. They are actually welcomed as a, into a magnet city. San Francisco, as you know, is a magnet for illegal aliens as a sanctuary city. It's also a magnet for the bums of the world who come out here for a free ride. We all know that. And it was one thing when they were just cashing in on it. Now they're taking over the city with their behavior. The question is, how do we, how do we solve it? What do we do? What do we, we, the people who live here, do? What do people do who rent apartments and own houses? What do they do? How do they do it? How do the councilmen insulate themselves from the crime? How do they do it? Well, I don't think that uh, they're the. I don't think they even see it. They're the type of people who would ignore the problem until it hits them square in the face. Only God forbid if they're affected by it directly, for example. And let's pray to God it would never happen. Where the illegal alien uh, who shot that poor young lady. God forbid, touches one of them personally, then maybe they would say something. But other than that, they would just gingerly step over the fecal matter in the streets and dodge the bullets. How would you do it? Denise, KKOH, Reno, Nevada. What would you do to solve the homeless infestations in, in America? Thank you, Dr. Savage. I have been a therapist for 23 years in northern Nevada. I've worked in three mental hospitals and worked with all ranges of the mentally ill and the and the sadly deranged because they've drank their brains into a wet brain state who need a place to be. And one of the older psych- psychiatric nurses that I worked with 20 years ago, and I had this wonderful conversation one night about her memory of working in Napa, and she called it the funny farm, and we had a laugh, and she said, no, seriously, we need funny farm. We need a place for them to go to milk the cows, to get their medicine, to have a purpose and to be contained. And, and my vision, if the president wanted to appoint me to that job, would be to reinstitute funny farms in every state. Call them what you will. Yeah, I agree with you. We, we, we must reopen the mental hospitals across America, and it needs to be done sooner rather than later. And that, that's how you get the dangerous, troublemaking homeless off the streets. That gives them the home that they're entitled to, doesn't it? I mean, it's homelessness. So you give them a mental hospital. That's a bed meals and care. Isn't that a humane solution? Absolutely. And the people who need to be working there are people like me who are counselors, people who are retired, people in the criminal justice world who want to give back, people who want to serve, but mostly the doctors and the nurses who really do want to care for people who are chronically mentally ill. All right. So why is it that the homeless coalitions around America continue to insist that they live in the gutters? and that we do more for them. The answer is they're raking off fortunes off, off the money. It's that simple. Do you know how much money San Francisco assigns to the, quote, homeless issue? The last I checked, it was in the three to $400 million a year range. How much of that money is raked off by these homeless uh, radical activists who claim that it's for the poor? As you well know, every time they talk about helping someone, they're helping themselves first. Look at their salaries. Look at what they do with the money. It all doesn't go to homeless services. A lot of it goes right into the pockets of the, quote, managers of these homeless brigades. Truly, and I All right, this is not limited to San Francisco. It's uh, New York. I was in New York. It was awful. And in New York, if I was walking on 6th Avenue at night, one night I 
couldn't sleep. It was like five to midnight. And I got up and I walked from 59th Street to Times Square, which was what, 49, about a mile. I don't know how long it was at night. And the stores were open. You know, there were people wander, walking back and forth. But amongst the, the ordinary citizens were vagrants, big vagrants with cups out. And they would look at you. And you sensed as they looked at you that they were sizing you up. Should they move on you, threaten you uh, for a, a shakedown, or overtly assault you and steal what you had? Well, luckily, I didn't get assaulted, but I felt it was right under the surface. So there are not only mentally ill people in the streets of America, mainly in the big cities, but also there are criminals, overt criminals, who need to be taken off the streets. Now, the cops used to be able to do that. The police used to be able to take the most aggressive of the panhandlers and move them on, move them out, get them away from homes. But it's gotten so bad in New York City right now that even Upper East Side streets with 20, 30 million dollar houses, including the street that on which Rudy Giuliani lives, there are bums who are defecating in doorways of mansions with impunity because of the liberalism of Mayor de Blasio, who refuses to permit the cops to drive them off the streets. So as I said to you, you look at any city run by a liberal mayor, a liberal city council, which are most cities, unfortunately, you're going to see out, outright uh, bums, crime, knockout games out of control. And this is what's going on. So the answer is, of course, first, it's political. But we can't wait for a change in leadership. Something has to be done before an election. What would you do? If you were the czar to solve this, what would you do to solve the problem? Now, I said open, first we've covered reopen the mental hospitals, right? That's a given. You start with the mentally ill and you put them where they can get the care that they need. I don't see what's wrong with that. I don't know why anybody would say that that's cruel or inhumane. The liberals are the reason that we have this problem. Kurt, WBAP in Dallas, how would you solve this problem? Well, first of all, the answer is right there in your break song, the Judas Priest song. Out there is a fortune uh, you know, to be made, and if you think you'll let it go, you're mad. you got another thing coming, and that's exactly what the liberal politicians do. That's the problem. So how do you stop them from doing that? Well, I guess the best way would be to reestablish the funny farms. I remember growing okay. up and asking my... Okay, but that, we're just, that's repeating what the last caller just said, so I guess we need to go through the callers now and eliminate the re, 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 repeat calls. Let's start with some new ideas. How would you do it? KCMO. Steve, what's your solution to the so-called homeless problem? Well, part of the problem is the numbers they skew. The, uh, they said they had 75 homeless children in Kansas City, and then I find out they classify any child that's in an apartment well, they don't have a home, so they must be homeless. So they get their numbers up to get more funding. But I, I uh, have a friend that works at a state mental hospital, and she said when the insurance runs out, they're told to certify them as good and put them back on the streets. And that's, you know, that's what they're doing with them. I, I, I think we do need the, the funny farms or whatever, more capacity to house them. You know what's interesting is I'm the first one in talk radio to talk about this, this homeless scourge in America in many years. We're all focused on ISIS and we're focused on the scourge of illegal aliens. Isn't it interesting, by the way, that most of the illegal aliens are not living in the streets? Has anyone noticed that? Raise your hand if you've noticed that most of the bums in the streets of America are not from Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, or China. Have you noticed that they're native peoples, meaning indigenous peoples? of several different races, but they're not from the illegal alien population. Does anyone know why? Raise your hand if you can tell us and George Jorge Ramos why America's streets, which are flooded with illegal, illegal alien, uh, with the homeless bums, don't seem to have any, any illegal aliens in the gutters. Does anyone know why? I'll give you an answer. Because the illegal aliens are coddled. They have so many social services given to them that they, they've gone to the head of the line, they are taken care of better than our own poor and uh, unfortunate. Did you know that? That's another little issue, and it's tied to the illegal aliens. Uh, the illegal alien issue, rather, is tied to the homeless issue. They're tied together. Again, simple observation from a man who observes real life 101 because I walk in the streets. 
amongst the bums who are paying